Why do you hold silver and gold? There's probably a lot of reasons we can come up with. But one of the big reasons is to protect ourselves, to protect our wealth. And when we look out at the big news stories, the big things going on right now in the world, it gets a little scary. Now, we don't want to be Debbie Downers. We don't want to be a doom and gloom, right? But we need to pull our head out of the sand and look at what's really going on. I was looking through the news last night, and there are some very interesting major stories that will impact the price of silver, will impact the price of gold, and we're going to talk about those right now today. The first one, uh, I didn't realize this, but the First Republic Bank, the big bank that failed, seems like history now, right? Have you noticed that? Like. Like the whole banking situations kind of faded from everyone's consciousness, not from our consciousness, but everybody else's. That's a big crisis that's unfolding. And JP Morgan took over First Republic Bank. Now, did you know First Republic Bank was the largest bank to fail in the United States since the great financial crisis? And I think it's officially like the second largest bank ever. Good old JP Morgan. You know what they're saying about J.P. Morgan now? I heard somebody refer to them as a mini Fed. <laughs> like a miniature Fed. Like they're so connected to the Fed that they're like a miniature version of the Federal Reserve. They took over First Republic Bank. You know what they immediately announced yesterday? 1,000 layoffs. So think about that right? That's a thousand people. Imagine, that's a good group of people, maybe like a high school theater. All those people lost their jobs. And we got a lot more in terms of job loss to talk about later in the video. I put together just a little list for you of companies that are actually closing their doors. And when you think about that, these people are losing their jobs what are they going to do? Where are they going to get their money from? Now, we're into gold and silver, right? Because we know the big picture. And platinum, Neil, don't worry. We love our platinum also. Not that you're worried about that. But nonetheless, we hold on to the metals to protect ourselves. I'm going to have another video coming out this weekend where I tell you about how much silver I recommend that you have. Now, I don't have a, nobody has a magic number, but I came up with what I think is a reasonable amount of silver that everyone should have in their possession. You know what? I'll ask you, and I want you guys to interact in the comment section right now, how many ounces of silver do you think is appropriate for a person to have? What's wise? What's a good idea? Within reason, right? Now, we got to bear in mind, we are precious metals uh, enthusiasts, right? But how much silver do you think is smart for a person to have? Let us know in the comments, and I'm going to see you guys arguing it out, battling it out over who's right, how much silver a person can have. But when we look at what's going on right now, right, the banking crisis, uh, the, uh, the debt limit crisis, geopolitically, <clears throat> are you feeling good that you made the decision to protect your wealth, to protect what you have with silver and gold? You likely are. Let's move on. You know, I, I want to mention this. Americans are living in la-la land. Not us. This is not la-la land. You've made the tough decision, the smart decision, the fun decision to come down here in the basement where we will dig into reality, right? We're not doom and gloom. We're not uh, super happy la-la land. We are in reality, right? Keep a level head. We need to keep a level head about things. But most of our cohorts, if you notice that when you talk to your neighbors or maybe your, your siblings or your friends or whoever it is about, try to talk to them about the banking crisis. They have no clue. Try to talk to them about the national debt. They have no clue. Try to talk to them about the BRICS. Ask somebody about the BRICS. Let me, I want to, I want to pose this question to you. Okay. I hope that everybody watching here knows what's going on with the BRICS nations, B-R-I-C-S, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, plus a growing, I mean, massive list of other countries. They're moving away from the dollar. They're moving to gold, silver, 
uh, oil, real assets to back their new reserve currency. Now, imagine, you know, when I'm at the neighborhood pool this weekend, because the neighborhood pool opens, and I can guarantee you, I have twin 11-year-old daughters, I will spend some time at the neighborhood pool. And I've got great neighbors. You know, I live in a middle, upper middle class suburb of St. Louis. These people are mostly college educated. Some of them even have master's degrees, and some even have doctorate degrees. I have a bachelor's degree. Let me just say this to you guys right now. No matter what degree you have or don't have, to me that bears no, very little influence on how smart somebody is because a lot of the smart, like book smart people that I know, and I've got some people that live around me that have doctorate degrees, and I've tried to talk to them about different things like the war in the Ukraine or silver and gold or the Federal Reserve. They're, they don't know what they don't know. They don't understand. I digress. Talk to some of your neighbors. Talk to some random people, right? When you're at a barbecue this weekend, say, what do you think about the BRICS countries? They're going to look at you like, what? Uh, uh, what what's a BRIC country? Sorry about that. The point is, most people don't care to be woken up. They're living in la-la land, right? We're living in reality land. You're in the basement with me, right? 140 of you right now. And we're just getting started, right? There are a growing, we are a growing number of people. If you give this video a thumbs up, a like, that helps get it out to more people. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please do that right now. End of that sales pitch. Am I a good salesman? I'll ring the bell if you subscribe. You got three seconds. One, two, three. Thank you. So everybody's living in la-la land. They don't know what gold and silver are, right? Americans, it was illegal to own gold and silver from 1933 to 1974. And after 1974, there's been a concerted effort to control and to kind of belittle and um, uh, keep down, tamp down gold and silver. People in America just don't understand gold and silver. You know what they understand? They understand paper and money, right? And I'm part of the crowd. I grew up 1970. I was born paper and money. They understand credit cards, right? They don't know what real money is like you. Do you know what real money is? That's why, because, you know, you know, right? Paper money, electronic money, a lot of cryptocurrencies. We aren't going to go down that road, right? But it's all, look, gold and silver. Coin shop Chris is going to love this. I know you're there, Coin Shop Chris, and you're going to love it too at home. You. Gold and silver are real money. Everything else is just really unicorn fart dust. It really is. I mean, the dollar's backed by nothing. It was kind of backed by oil, but now it's not really backed by oil anymore because the Saudis in the Middle East are like, yeah, we're kind of done with that. We're going to move on. It's going to be interesting time. So while everybody else is living in la la land, you know, I don't know. You know, more good news. This was, did you hear this? Did you know that yesterday, uh, a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, a mortgage rate on a house is now above 7%, 7%. It was lower than three just a few years ago. Guys, do not buy a house right now unless you absolutely have to, because we're still living on the froth. And I own a home, right? I mean, I'm that's my extent of my real estate investing. But we're living on the froth of the money printing bubble that's gone on for however long you want to measure it. Uh, the last 12 years, last 20 years, whatever. These rates are higher. When that bleeds through, I wouldn't want to be a realtor right now. You know, I wouldn't want to be a home builder. Don't buy a house unless you have to, right? Unless you're going to sell and buy or don't take out a mortgage. I would I would wait. That would be my recommendation. Although I don't offer financial advice, but what's going to happen? We already know what's happening with Home Depot, right? Their sales are down. Ah, it's getting really, really ugly. And let's not even talk about commercial real estate. Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's buddy, he said, there's the commercial real estate market is a mess. 
the banks, that's going to screw the banks up. The banks have loaned all this money out on all these shopping centers and office parks and all this stuff, right? And all that money they loaned out so these builders could build these office buildings that are now 45% empty in these new shopping centers. They're good looking, no doubt about it, but all that money they loaned out, the value of that real estate is now maybe 60, 70, maybe 80, maybe 40, 50% of what the loan balances are. When that gets through on the bank, I mean, what the bank, between that and the bonds, the banking, gold and silver are real money. I don't, I don't know how to, how more to say it to you. They're real money. All this other debt, all this other, you know, when the banking system starts to implode, they're already doing backdoor bailouts, printing money. People just don't realize it yet. They make it very confusing for the average person to understand. Right, they're doing bailouts. They're doing, you know, they're 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 raising rates here, but then they're, you know, it's kind of like here's a great analogy. I haven't used this for almost eleven days. Here's a great analogy of what the Fed. The Fed is killing. Why is gold and silver down? Right? Why are gold and silver down the last two weeks? Why have we been subjected to this pain? Because the dollar's going up. Because the dollar's going up. Right? Okay. Right. Right, because the Fed's going to be hawkish. That's why gold and silver price have been down. But realize this. The Fed's over there with the old fire extinguisher putting out the fire. Oh, we're raising rates, and that's making the dollar grow up. But they're secretly over here with their other hand fanning the fire to keep it going with backdoor bailouts, smoke and mirrors. I don't care how you want to say it. They make it purposely very confusing so that even very smart people like you and me, there's not a lot of data disclosed. And, and then what they do is very confusing on top of it. It's just a big, big mess. What about cars? Do you drive a car? What do you think about the car market? What about the truck market? Okay. Here's what I'm hearing. Here's what I'm hearing. I know a guy that owns a car dealership here in St. Louis. The car market is turning. I mean, remember, did you experience that? Remember during the uh, 2020 when cars, used cars, went up significantly in value? Well, guess what, guys? That bubble's about to burst on a number of levels, a number of reasons. Rates on car loans. People take out loans to buy cars. Do you believe that? Do you have a loan on a car? You know, it, I mean, I'm not putting anybody down. People take out loans to buy cars. The rates are like at decade, multi-decade highs right now. The average car loan payment in, in America is $1,000 per month. There is inventory right now starting to build up. Trucks, remember you couldn't get pickup trucks? You couldn't get a lot of cars. It's starting to build up right now. We had some problems with our Honda Odyssey last summer, and I was about ready to give up on the darn thing. It only has 100,000 miles on it. And I started looking for, we were going to buy a Kia Carnival or something. It's kind of minivan thing. You know, there's none available. None. None. Now, since these car dealerships have my information, they're sending me texts. They're calling me. Hey, we got a car. We got, we got one coming in. We got, you know... I just sense the car market is going to turn and it's going to be very, very interesting. And who can, people can't afford the payments, right? Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about what, you know, when all this debt, silver and gold are going to do so well when all this debt, this debt bubble, you've got the government with $32 trillion in debt. You got gold and silver down here, a little bit, little bit solid, right? This stuff is solid, baby. There's a 10-ounce silver bar. Look at that. That is solid. Gold backing everything up. You've got car debt through the roof. You've got government debt through the roof. You got gold and silver down there backing it up, right? Backing it all up. You got... You got mortgage debt through the roof. Oh, I forgot about corporate debt through the roof. It, it, it's not a pretty scene, okay? Debit card and credit card data is showing that people are pulling back. Are you pulling back? 
Let us know, right? I'm pulling back. You, we've all been kind of forced to pull back lately, unfortunately. Let's talk about uh, what's going on, what like news stories we're getting regarding silver and gold. But first, let's go to the comments and say hi to a couple of you guys. Hello, Joseph. 80 to 85 for a truck. Yeah, it's crazy. Dealers are hurting. They can't sell them. Yes. Do, do, do. Hello, Snakebite. Hello, Greg, man. Keep on preaching. <laughs> Preacher Ron. That's what they used to call me. Keep on preaching. Oh, yeah. Laffy Taffy. Thank you. I was going to save that for the end. This is big news, guys, out of Europe. And does this affect gold and silver? You're darn tootin'. Give me one second while I take a drink of coffee. Yesterday, we got big news out of Europe, Germany. We don't hear a lot about this, but Germany is one of the biggest, most sophisticated economies in the world. And Germany has officially, officially entered a recession. Oh, really? Interesting. It's going to come apart, guys. You know, you got to remember, I, 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 you know, I tried to tell you last week, I made a video a list of the 25 most indebted countries in the world. Guess what? It's all G7. It's all United States and its allies that have done this unicorn fart dust, make-believe, paper, digital, money, whatever you want to call it. All the BRICS countries, they weren't on that list. Russia's not on there. India, I mean, they're not on the list. It's going to come apart. And when we start to go into a recession, Germany... I don't know. I'm not going to lie to you. You don't come here to be lied to. I don't know if they're the fifth, sixth biggest economy in the world. I don't know. Maybe one of you can Google it and let us know. But they're darn big, and they're in darn big trouble, okay? That's not even factoring in the other trouble we have in Europe right now, which is a, a, a major conflict going on between the East and the West, between basically the BRICS countries and the United States. Um, it's, it's very, very interesting. D. Fristo said, I heard the Fed might raise the interest rate two times next month. Yeah, one of the Fed governors, Waller, excuse me, said that they're going to need to raise rates two more times. I don't know. I don't think they're going to raise by a half percent next month. But if they do, that will not be good for the price temporarily. This is all temporary. The, the silver and gold price getting pushed down, the movements we have on a daily basis when they're they're kind of move it's been moving down, the dollars going up, it's temporary. The reason you want to know the reason why the gold price and the silver price are down, it's easy. It's real easy. It's simple. The reason the gold price and the silver price have been down is because the dollar has gone up, quote unquote, in value. Are you, are you following why I say quote unquote? I think you probably are, right? Because there's a big caveat to that. The dollar's quote unquote up in value, right? Did you ever think about the fact that the dollar, the DXY index, it's compared to the DXY index compares the dollar to basically the euro and the yen, okay? It doesn't compare it to any of the other currencies that are going to become backed by real, real assets, real money. It compares it to the euro. The Europeans are in worse shape than we are financially. And the yen. And remember, this is what controls temporarily, temporarily, right? Not the same type of temporarily like Nixon did when he took us off the gold standard. This is really temporarily. And maybe when Nixon took us off the gold standard, it was temporarily because we are going to have to go back to some form, officially go back to some form of, of, of silver and gold backing our money. Huh? How does that sound to you? Right? Because silver and gold have always backed the money. I don't care what Tricky Dick, Richard Nixon was, look, I'm not, a, this is not a political channel. We're not, I'm not, but. They called him Tricky Dick for a reason, and he took us off the gold and silver standard. How do you, what does that mean? <laughs> um, yeah, let that one sink in. So, gold price, silver price getting slaughtered lately. 
right? Ah, you know, a mild slaughtering because the dollar's up at the dollar, the dollar index, it's compared to the euro and the yen. Do you really think, I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a seesaw, okay? This is very key. This will bring you to the next level. I'm not joking. You want to go to the next level of understanding of precious metals? You got to understand this key, key, key component, key concept is a better word. Can you put your thing, can you open your mind? You can get this. It's not real complicated. When you're comparing the dollar in the euro, the dollar in the yen, right? It's like a seesaw, right? It goes back and forth, up and down. But imagine at the same time, the whole seesaw is sinking into quicksand, right? People say, oh, the dollar's up. Well, yeah, the dollar's up, but it's about to get swallowed by quicksand. Another way you can think about this is it's like four guys who jump off the Empire State Building. The U.S. dollars, the yen, the euro, and some other currency, the Canadian Kanaka Daka, <laughs> Canadian dollar. And they're all falling, right? They're all falling to their imminent death. But the but if the dollar's up in value, he's just the guy who's temporarily falling a little slower. But that's what they use to why do we even talk? Why you know what? I can't believe I I did this to you. I I owe you an apology. I apologize sincerely from the bottom of my heart. And then I gotta tell you why. I was late for the live stream. What my wife, Susie, <laughs> what she told me to tell you why I was late for the live stream. Oh, uh, anyway, it's crazy, right? The, 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 what was the, apo oh, the apology. The apology. I owe you an apology. I'm talking to, keep talking about the price of, why do we even talk about it? Why? Why do we, why do we even, why do we really care? what the dollar fiat unicorn fart dust value of silver and gold is. I mean, really, the value of silver and gold are in ounces, in weight, not in dollar terms, right? Ask somebody from 400 years ago how many dollars an ounce of silver were worth, right? They'd look at you like, what are you talking about? What's a dollar, right? What do you think 100 years from now? Ask them how many dollars. What do you think? I, people get people really get angry with Coin Shop Chris and I because sometimes we talk about things like eight thousand, eighty thousand dollars silver or gold. What do you think the price of silver will be in a hundred years? But more importantly, what do you think the value of silver will be in a hundred years? Look back a hundred years ago. And think of someone, if, if you had been alive then and someone had asked you that question, you know, and you had told them silver would be at $25 an ounce, they probably would have would have uh, made a little accident in their pants, right? I mean, come on. Let's talk about the more good news going on out there in the economy. Let me just run through this quick list of good news we had. Bath and Body Works. Now I am I'm sure you're all really upset about that like I am. Bath and Body Works closing 50 stores. Macy's. These are big stores. 100 stores closing. I never heard of this one but apparently it was real big. Bye bye baby closing 120 stores. Bye bye baby. You know, they're gone. Um Kohl's, Walmart, Target are all saying 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 a hundred thumbs up. Super appreciate that, guys. I appreciate you being here as well. Hey, don't forget, at the end of this, we're going to do the best part. We're going to have a question and answer. I'm going to go through any question you have, any comment. Nothing's out. Nothing, nothing is off base, okay? Uh, I will take a look. So don't forget about that, all right? Thank you for the thumbs up. And please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Well, Kohl's, Walmart, Target, what are they saying? They're saying business is slowing, but even more interesting, we're dealing with massive amounts of theft. They're saying like cities like San Francisco is a city of chaos, like anarchy, like people just walk into Walmart or walk into uh, Target or Walgreens or whatever and just kind of take what they want. 
because you know, like the police aren't going to do. I mean, it. What what is going on out there? What went on? Did you see this deal with uh, O'Hare Airport? Are people? Are you finding yourself more edgy lately? I'll be honest with you. I probably am. I was talking to Susie. I'm like, you know what? People just seem more edgy lately, including me, right? Everybody. Like, there's something going on, but nobody really knows. Maybe it's all the pressure from the economy. There was, like, some big fight at O'Hare Airport at the baggage claim area. And then there, no, I don't want to buy, uh, bash Chicago, but then there's this footage of this like family fair with like rides and like 150, like a mob of crazy teenagers show up and start like just randomly beating people up. I'm like, what is going on? I mean, it's just absolutely, absolutely crazy. Uh, they're going to fix the debt ceiling. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Next week's going to be super interesting in that. Are they going to fix the debt ceiling? Let's get started with that. It appears it's a foregone conclusion because all of our elected representatives, even though we're facing catastrophic consequences, all of our elected officials went home for the holidays, and we've got like through next week to fix the debt ceiling. Do you think the debt ceiling will be fixed? I want to know in the comments. Yes. Or no? Will it be raised? Yes or no? Let's see what you got, guys. Let's see what you got. Now is question and answer period. Any question, all caps, anything you want me to talk about, all caps. Okay? Anything. Your thoughts are important. You're important. Okay? We're trying to get the... Uh, 22,000 subscribers by the end of the month, trying to get the word out there for people. You know, everything that you do to help Ron's Basement is greatly appreciated. And, and anytime you can share the videos or tell people about the channel, that's greatly appreciated as well. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, not in time. Yeah, it'll be really, it'll be really interesting if next week they don't raise it, right? I wish they wouldn't, I'll be honest with you. But, uh, I, you know, I think obviously the odds are in favor of it being raised, but it'll be very raised, fixed, no. <laughs> good one, Paul. That's a good answer. Raised, yes, fixed, no. And um, I heard somebody say the other day they're calling it a debt crisis, but the real crisis is that we're in the situation where we need to raise the debt limit. That's the crisis. Not that it does or doesn't get raised or doesn't get the fact that we are raising it is the crisis. Does that make sense? Sense? A default is the best long-term solution. Hey, Neil, great to see you. And by the way, guys, will you do me a favor? I don't ask for a lot, right? Susie always likes when I approach her with that one. I don't ask for a lot, but there's a person who really helps out a lot with the channel, Coin Shop Chris. It would mean a lot to me and him if you said, thank you, Coin Shop Chris, because he's working behind the scenes to make a lot of this possible. And he's a great guy. Okay. Come on, guys. What do you want me? I'm ready for your questions. A, de a default, Neil says. The higher it goes, the harder the fall. Very good point, Sharon. And, and I think, uh, yeah, when we talk about the national debt, right, the bigger it gets, the bigger, I mean, it's gone way beyond, I think, what most of us could fathom, right? And don't forget the key thing to remember, silver, gold, platinum for our friend Neil and palladium. But the base, you know, the precious metals, they're the base of this whole system. All this crazy cr stuff they put on top of it. Uh, and it's getting more and more and more. I mean, I've heard P Putin say it himself. He's like, the wet, the, the, the days of the West and the imaginary money, right? What we're waiting for is to hear a world leader call the U.S. money and the euro and the yen. The yen's the worst. Unicorn fart dust. Then we'll have a big, big smile on our hands. All right, Keaton has a, um, a question. How is silver tied to the dollar when they took it? Uh, look at it as an industrial met metal rather than a currency. There's some truth to that, Keaton. Uh, and that's a point of debate within the precious metals community. Is silver still a monetary money or is it purely 
just an industrial metal. I'll argue that it is certainly retains a large component of its monetary um, uh, component, <laughs> right? Uh, we still have sovereign mints, minting coins with, with money associated with it, right? Uh, uh, whether you're talking about the UK Britannia, the Australian Kangaroo, uh, the American Silver Eagle, they all have all the coins like the Canadian Mint puts out. They all have a monetary base with it. And silver has a longer monetary history than gold. So, you know, um, yes, I, I it, 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 it certainly has an industrial component, right? From a supply-demand perspective, that's a good thing, but it also retains its monetary um, uh, function as well. Let the elite pay. They're the ones that made this mess. Yeah, I'd, I would agree with that, right? But they don't have to pay. The elites get bailed out, right? If they had money in First Republic Bank or... Uh, you know, any of these other Sili Silicon Valley, remember Silicon Valley Bank? They get bailed out. We can't, we can't let them have any pain, but we can stick it to the middle class, right? We can stick it to them with super high inflation and high taxes. Yeah. The U.S. Constitution. Yep, there's a little clause in the U.S. Constitution about silver and gold. Do, do, do. All right, guys. Thank you for being here. Um, oh, Laffy Taffy, let's touch on that real quick. It, um, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of theories as to why uh, the IRS hired so many agents, right? It's interesting, to say the least. Um, at what number will Powell stop raising the interest rates? I say 10%. You know, there's people like to compare things back to the 80s and Volcker, but Volcker didn't have the level of debt that we have now. If they, you know, the, the system, I think even now, uh, it's costing the U.S. government more just to pay interest on all the bonds that they owe than they're spending on the defense budget. So to think that they're going to raise rates twice from where it is now uh, it would be a huge, huge mess. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you this weekend. Until then, take care of yourself. Be well. You're the best.